Hi everybody, Christopher Neyman. I'm back with another machine. This is the Singer Futura Quartet. This is a combination sewing and embroidery machine, and we're going to do some sewing on it today. Well, what do you think kind of sewing I'm going to do? I'm going to do metallic thread, sulky, flat sliver metallic thread. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back everybody. So we're going to use the sulky sliver thread and I'm going to use a top stitch size 14 needle. I have the adapter called the Wonder Thread Guide, which is on here. Let me put the book behind you so you can see. Okay, which is attached to the top uh, thread spool uh, pin. It feeds the thread up, you see, because metallic thread has to be fed from the side. And on this machine, I found the best way to feed it is to use this device. Now, there are other metallic thread um, attachments you can buy out there. But this is the Wonder Thread Guide that I have. It is still available. You'll have to do some research for it online. Um, I like it because of the way it feeds and it has better control. There are some other attachments you can get that attach to your bobbin winder. Um, and other attachments that are standalone on this, uh, that you put behind the machine. So let's just work with this. Now, this machine has a manual tension. So I have the tension turned down to two, okay? I have my top stitch needle in size 14 as I showed you. I've got a uh, satin stitch foot on. And for the bobbin, I just have regular construction thread in here. Now, I'm going to do a satin stitch on here. So I already selected the satin stitch. There it is, right there, okay? And, uh, this machine does not have a knee lifter, nor does it have a thread cutter. So, you got to do all that manually. All right, so here we go. Oh, and I've got the speed all the way up. Now, I do want to point out, in my previous video, I showed you all how to fix that rattling noise in the bobbin area. And what I wanted to emphasize to you is that when you take this plate off, and you take the bobbin case out, take a Q-tip, and clean inside all the way around and then get your uh, you can use Singer machine oil or you can use this zoom spout oil I get this from Walmart and Joann's carries this also and you want to oil the whole bobbin uh, what they call the shuttle in there then you put your bobbin case back in and watch my previous video on how to adjust your uh, throat plate here to make sure that it's in properly because the throat plate on these singers holds down the bobbin case and it has to be on just right to prevent that sound. So here we go. Full speed metallic thread. The Like I said, the metallic thread is the sulky sliver and what I have in there is like the sliver but they call it hollow shimmer because you can see all the, it's got like Christmas tree lights in it. Isn't that cool? I love using metallic threads and I've done many, many videos on them. So just go to my YouTube channel and you can watch all those metallic threads from the past. Okay, so here we go. And remember, this is full speed. And here's how that's working there. You see that? Now I also want to point out that I have a large spool cap here and it's not holding real, real tight. You see I have just a tiny bit of play here. You want that to be able to move freely. The reason why I have the large spool cap on here is just in case any of this thread were to get loose, it won't tangle around the side of the spool. That's well, some of the biggest problems when people use these threads is the thread can get tangled on the side. With any thread that you use horizontally like this, you should always put a spool cap on and use this if the thread like construction thread is coming out from the side like this you should use the appropriate size spool cap say this was regular embroidery thread or regular construction thread you want to use the small spool cap on there okay I know a lot I've seen a lot of professionals or so-called professionals educators so-called educators quote unquote that say you don't need spool caps but you do you absolutely have to 
And when you bust the needle and this thread gets all caught up and tangled, you understand why. Now, you do not feed metallic thread from the side because if you do, it'll kink and it'll break. It has to stay flat as it's fed from the side. Now, if you, if you feed it vertically, some of my machines, it could be fed vertically, okay? So it comes out from the side. In other words, on some machines, it can, it can be fed that way and come out from the side like that. It has to stay flat. Do you understand? That's why so many people had issues in the past. We do not put this in a coffee cup six feet away. We do not put it in a freezer. You have to have the right setup. And this is one of the devices that allows you the right setup. Again, there are many other devices out there for metallic threads. Just do a little research and check out my previous uh, metallic thread uh, videos. I'll put a link to one that I did for genome, my Janome machine. I'll put the link to that in the description box on YouTube under this video so you can watch that video. Let's check that out. Let me just lower the foot or the needle that is. I'm sorry. Okay, let's turn this. And, oh, look how pretty. Look how pretty that is. Now I'm using duck cloth to do this test on. And here's the back. Back looks just as pretty. One of the important things with metallic thread is you can't stretch it. You can't have too much tension. If you do, it'll break. Now, I told people for years when they told me these metallic threads don't work or the machines don't like them, um, I told them, I said, well, they've got to work, otherwise the manufacturers wouldn't keep making them. I think it's just operator error not knowing the right setup. And you don't put it in a freezer, and you don't put it six feet away in a coffee cup. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make physics sense. It doesn't make chemical sense. It doesn't make engineering sense. The proper sense it makes is... The thread has to stay flat as it's fed. And you use a size 14 or 16 top stitch needle because the eye of the needle is much wider to accommodate that. Can you see how wide the eye of that needle is? That will accommodate that thread. And I've had success using these metallic threads on every brand sewing machine that I've used. And people who have told me these singers that don't work on these singers Look what I've done the last couple days in the videos, showing everybody. I only own these machines a couple days. Many people have owned these machines forever, and I've already fixed this little bobbin issue problem. And even the dealers didn't even know that. Some of the dealers didn't even know that I talked to. So I'm not saying I'm the greatest because I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a. I don't fix engines. You know, I don't know a damn thing about fixing engines. But I know what makes sense, and what makes sense is setting it up properly, right? Common sense when you know how to sew. And if you ever have any doubt about using threads, write the manufacturer. I'm telling you what, Sulky is fabulous at customer service. And when I first learned about threads years ago, they wrote me and gave me, my, gave me the suggestions, and I went from there with it. You can't go wrong. Okay, so now... Let's see here. Let's try another satin stitch. Let's go back up here. Let's do this crescent one. All right. This machine is limited on its stitching, okay? It's very limited, but um, it's the whole body of it is much like all their other uh, XLs and quart quartets, or whatever they call them. So here we go here. Check that out. Oh, it's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so let's try another stitch. Let's let's try something. Oh, let's try this star stitch. You know what this star stitch is? If you use a wing needle with this star stitch, um, it's it's heirloom. It's an heirloom stitch. So let's see what it looks like with the metallic thread. That's this. If you've got the star stitch, what's cool if you use a wing needle on cotton batiste, it puts the holes. Um, makes holes so you have an heirloom. You have that heirloom looking stitch.
By the way, many of you have written to me personally and thanked me for that last video on how to fix the bobbin case area, and you are quite welcome. You are very quite welcome. This is why I love sewing and teaching. Um, this is why I wrote books, to help people be creative. And the only way you could be creative with your machines is if you have flawless working machines. And the way you get flawless working machines is through the proper setup. Now, I've heard people for years say these new Singer machines are crap. You know, they're crap, they're crap, they're crap. Well, I haven't worked with the new modern machines except for this past week. And can you see what I'm doing? I'm getting them to work for me. So there's success right there. You just got to know your setups, everybody. And um, yeah, they got some engineering flaws. They have a little more engineering flaws than your other brand machines, but we're making it work and you're working with me together on it. Isn't that great? Okay, so let's finish this. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, that's a beautiful stitch. Let's see if I can focus it because it's so shiny. Yeah. And see if you use a wing needle and cotton thread or, you know, wing needle with a metallic thread. I did a video on that too, my heirloom video. You'd want to check that one out. I used the, the sulky sliver opal color thread and it was absolutely beautiful. So there you go. All right. I hope this helps everybody. Hope it's giving you some encouragement to pull this machine or any machine like this that uh, out of your closet to work with. And um, so there's the results again, everybody. All right. Have fun. Leave me your comments. See how it works for you. Take care. Bye now.